All right, guys, so we are transitioning into a new training cycle. Starting today, one of the things we're gonna be focusing on is our pressing strength and handstand push-up strength. Last cycle, we did a lot of pulling. It's kind of switching gears on that gymnastic pressing strength. So today, we are going to test our max strict handstand push-up. So this is a very hard skill. I'm gonna take some time to go through each, um, each variation of this. A lot of ways we can scale depending on your skill and strength. So, uh, Number one is the idea of thinking about the, the position. We talk about the tripod bottom position. If you think about how you press a barbell, right? Your hands are here, you press overhead. So in a handstand push-up, that same concept, uh, we don't want to start with our hands next to our heads. When, you'll notice at the bottom of each rep that I do, my hands and the top of my head are going to form this kind of uh, triangle we call a tripod position. So um, always just keep that in mind for each of our variations. The most basic thing that you can do uh, is working up to a heavy set of five reps of a seated dumbbell press. So a seated dumbbell press, you just sit on the ground, pick up some dumbbells, right, and drive to a lockout for five reps to see how heavy you can do, all right? Um, from there, we're gonna go to a, using a bench. And so remember that concept, we wanna try to get the hips over the shoulders and hit that tripod position. So I set my hands up, I tuck my chin, Notice my hips are high. As I come down at the bottom, I touch the top of my head and push back to that head between the arms position. A common mistake I see is that people are really far out and they do something like this. So notice where my hips are in comparison to my shoulders. Okay, I want to be piked up with that tucked chin position. Okay, so this is really hard if you're not used to it. Um, for today's variations, we're saying no more than a single ab mat. So if this is hard for you to do a few reps, um, you can bring in an ab mat, which reduces the range of motion just a little bit. It also gives you a little bit of protection, but same concept. All right, nice high hips, head is between the arms, chin tucked, tap, and push back through for a max effort, okay? From here, we can go to the actual real deal against the wall. So again, we don't wanna be doing anything higher than one ab mat for today. Same concept, we're going to kick up, Hands are in the back end of the ab mat. Going to touch, our, tap our head, and strict max effort. So this would be a scale. I kick up, keep the chin tucked, touch the top of the head, drive back out. Okay. Take away the ab mat is going to be the RX version. So hands and head at the same touch to lock out as many reps as you can do. And for those athletes that are really strong, we can make this more challenging by adding a deficit. So here's what a deficit looks like, is something like this. I can take these 45 pound plates, right, or something like this. I could take that out. And now my head has to go further than my hands at the bottom. So if you can do 15 or more strict handstand push-ups, we want you to add a deficit in there, all right? So that's our test for today. Don't worry, this is the beginning, so we're gonna get the train and retest this again in six weeks. Let's talk about the other part of our strength today. All right, so now we've tested our strict handstand push-ups. We're gonna do some accessory strength work. Uh, two movements, it's gonna be three rounds, perform 15 banded lat pull-downs, straight arms, so when you do this, Remember, you can change the difficulty by how high the bar is, right? So meaning how much stretch you have and the width of the band. So when you set up for this, make sure your ribs are down and tight. Think hollow position, okay? Arms stay straight, and you're going to drive down for 15 reps, okay? Try to keep the body nice and tight, okay? Good control up and down for 15 reps. Change weight on the band if you need. Rest 30 seconds, and then we go to the... A single leg Romanian deadlift. So these are great, um, require a little bit of balance, build that posterior chain. So these are meant to be light. Go slow on the way down and then squeeze a little quicker on the way up. So six reps, I'm gonna use a barbell. You can also hold on to a dumbbell, kettlebell, but really focus on keeping that whole foot, that big toe uh, pressing into the ground because you don't wanna be wobbling around. All about stability, reach back with that back leg hinging through the back hip, come back up. So nice and slow and controlled on the way down, reaching back with that back leg, and then stand up. Okay, what we want to avoid here 
is rounding the back where you're reaching and rounding this way. So we want to be pivoting through the hip. Okay, this is hard, right? So you got to control your balance, right? Um, so again, start light, control, reach, feel tension in your hamstring, go, uh, go down as far as you can without losing that back position. Okay, six each leg, three rounds through those movements for quality. Let's talk about conditioning. Okay, we got a super fun test for you. Two parts, the first is going to be a chipper. We've got 12 minute time cap. It's gonna start with 30 cals on the bike. So you go hard, 30 cals on the bike. From there, you're gonna pick up a kettlebell. The prescribed weight is heavier than our normal kettlebell. So for guys, the 70 or the green one, for ladies, the blue or 55 pounds. All right, so this is a fun you know, test to try something heavier. It's 30 reps. Ideally, the, the kettlebell will go overhead, okay, every rep. Loading the hips, really being aggressive, keeping the chest up. Remember, when that weight comes down from overhead, it's gonna pull you out of position, so you gotta keep that chest tight and, and push the hips back, loading the posterior chain. If you're using this weight for the first time, maybe you've never used this, this heavier weight before, maybe scale to a Russian swing. So you get to feel the weight in your hands and your hips, but you make it less but dynamic by just going to that eye level. All right, so that's a fun way to scale this as well, not just scaling the weight, but the range of motion. Okay, 30 reps there. From there we go to 30 box jumps. So a box jump is not an over, staying on the same side. Make sure you stand up on top of the box every single rep. So a two-footed jump up, you can step down, you can hop down, okay? Just make sure you stand up on top of every rep. I always tell people, sometimes people get nervous, right? The box hitting their shin, they're really tired, and then they'll scale to stepping up. Stepping up is a very different movement. We wanna focus on exploding through the hips, that jumping action. So if you're nervous about the height, scale the height down and work on your two-footed jumping, okay? Um, unless you have some type of injury. From there, we're gonna finish off with 30 uh, handstand push-ups. We did strict handstand push-ups. All of those variations work for this. Do something that's a little bit easier because you should be able to move through it. Uh, the kipping handstand push-up though is going to be allowed for this workout. So that's gonna be what most people will do prescribe is going to be a kipping using the hips handstand push-up for this 12 minute cap. When you finish, check your time. You get a three minute rest. And then test number two is an 800 meter run for time. Okay, so this is a challenging distance. It's meant to be a sprint. You're obviously gonna be tired. Uh, so if you're not sure where you're at or your goal on this, I'd say start off with a pretty easy, easy-ish pace and try to push yourself to maintain that pace and finish strong at the end. Check the clock when you come in. And those are two scores for today. Good luck, see you tomorrow.